everyone. So now, the salt that we are preparing will be sodium sulfate. So we need the following reagents. That will be sulfuric acid. Okay, and you can get it from the bench region, okay, which is in front at your bench. And we also need to have sodium hydroxide. Okay, what else do we need? We will need to set up the burette as such using the tripod stand. And we also need a pipette. Filler and a pipette. Okay, so firstly, we need to place sulfuric acid into your conical flask. So this is a pipette filler and you will have to use the pipette filler together with the pipette. Okay? Pour out your acid into a beaker. So, step one, we have to pipette up 25 cm cube of acid into the conical flask. Now, you will have to make sure that the meniscus is directly below the brown line. What you can do is, you can press S if you look carefully, there's a letter S. S will allow the liquid to move upwards. If you want, if you have overshot and you would like some of the liquid to flow back into the beaker again, you press E gently. And the liquid level will start to form. Okay? So once you have measured out 25 cm cube of acid, you can actually remove the pipette filler and the liquid will start to drip into the conical flask. Now, step two, you will need to put the alkaline into the burette. So what you can do is, open up your bottle of sodium hydroxide. Okay, now you'll realize that the burette is too tall. You may want to put it onto the floor or onto a bench so that you can pour it more easily. Pour 50 cm cube of sodium hydroxide into the burette. Now you would realize that there is an air gap that is below over here. So you would need to rinse out the liquid such that it will be more accurate. Okay. So now, how you can do it is that you can turn the burette tap slowly. Check that your burette level is at the 0 cm cube. If you realize that it is not at the 0 cm cube, you will need to fill in more alkaline so that it goes all the way back to 0 cm cube. Make sure you lower your head to prevent parallax error. You will realize that both of the acid and the alkaline is colorless. So you will need to know when do you stop the reaction. So what we do over here is we add a drop off indicator and in this case I'm using metal orange. So when I add metal orange into acid, immediately it turns red. Next, you place your conical flask below the burette. Now, you will start the neutralization reaction. So once you open the tap, your alkaline will start to move downwards and into the conical flask. And the acid and the alkaline will start reacting. So you need to do this slowly. So as I swirl, I will allow thorough mixing of the acid and the alkaline. Can you see that it is still red? 
which means that there are still acids in your conical flask. So you need to add more alkaline from the burette. So now you realize that that one drip will actually cause a color change. So at this point in time, what can we conclude? The acid and the alkaline has completely neutralized each other. So you have added sufficient amount of alkaline. So in this case now, you would have to read the amount of sodium hydroxide that is added. If looking at my burette reading, Okay, remember you have to lower your head such that you do not have any parallax error. I have used about 26.2 cm3 of alkaline. So I will need to repeat the experiment. Why do I have to repeat the experiment? Now you see, your salt is contained inside. However, it has been contaminated with your indicator. So can you say that you have prepared a pure sample of the salt? No, you can't, right? So this time round, we will need to repeat the experiment using 26.2 cm3 of alkaline and no indicator. So let's repeat the experiment. Remember to check that you have 50 cm3 of alkaline in your burette. So you will need to flush out the excess alkaline. Also need to prepare a fresh sample of sulfuric acid. So pipette out 25 cm3 of sulfuric acid. Remember, use a pipette filler. Without using any indicator, repeat the experiment by allowing the alkaline to react with the acid in the conical flask. Now, because I didn't add any indicator, you will realize that when you add your alkaline, there is no color change. When there is no color to indicate when is the end of the reaction. But how do we know how much alkaline to add? Remember, we have done the first round before and we know to add 26.2 cm3 of alkaline. Okay, so once you reach about 25 cm3, you need to add your alkaline drop by drop so that you will not exceed the value that you need. Okay, and so I have added 26.2 cm3 of alkaline. Now, look at this. This will now contain a pure sample of sodium sulfate solution. When you prepare salt, you will need to prepare the dry sample. So from the solution, how do you get the salt crystals? What we do is, we will need to pour out the sodium sulfate solution into a evaporating dish and then we will evaporate our solution to dryness and let's see what will happen when we put this on the Bunsen burner and now I place my evaporating dish on top of the Bunsen burner and I turn on my fire okay. make sure that it is an open air hole because an open air hole will gives a hotter flame. Now you will have to heat it till all the water in the solution has evaporated. And okay.
Okay, once all the water has evaporated, turn off the flame and you will be able to see all the salt that is at the side of the evaporating dish. When your evaporating dish has cooled down, you will be able to scrape all the salt off the dish and you can collect the salt. And this salt is known as sodium sulfate. And with that, we have come an end to this experiment.